everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's the Panthers going up against the Falcons. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with the Carolina Panthers. Hello, folks, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right, lots of options for both of these squads. Here's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the offensive unit for the Carolina Panthers trotting out there. Cam Newton, there's the quarterback of the Panthers. And yeah, Super Bowl two years ago, then the disappointing 6-10 and 10 season. But boom, this year back with double-digit wins, back in the playoffs. And many people wondered what would happen around midseason when they traded his big target, Kelvin Benjamin, to the Buffalo Bills. Plus, he's an excellent friend of Cam's. So people wonder, how would he handle that? Well, he got Greg Olson back at tight end. That's Went helpful. back to his number one target. <laughs> they ran the ball more effectively, as did Cam himself. And now he's back looking like the Cam Newton we know. The Carolina Panthers prowling towards the playoffs. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's got Rome. <laughs> And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. First down, Newton. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. And what about this offense, Charles? Specifically, what about Jonathan Stewart? He makes sure everything goes. Put the ball in his chest and watch him run. Can run with power inside, but has enough speed that when he gets outside, he can cause a lot of trouble. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now a first carry for Jonathan Stewart. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, here's Newton. And that is incomplete. I better raise my voice a little bit here because one thing we can already tell, even in the first year in the league with this new stadium, it's going to get loud in this place. Yeah, the old place was loud, but I think we're getting a sense that this place is going to be louder. Yeah, they're riding that momentum of that 2016 team that finished their year in the Super Bowl. <laughs> a 
Velarde now on to punt as he sends this one away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. Tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. Showed some flash on the run, but he will be brought down shy of his 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. But both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won, and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage, or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae Freeman that time. And it's third and four. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Now that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Here's Matt Bosher now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. yards on the punt there and the Panthers will take over now first and ten here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here and our games hit a little bit of a lull here a little bit of a snag punts on back-to-back -back drives and old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that didn't turn it over right didn't create a big play for the other team right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position and that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone fraction defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They go 
back to Stewart on first. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The starting defense for the Falcons. Deion Jones may be undersized at middle linebacker by traditional standards, but in today's game, he's exactly what you're looking for. His speed allows him to outrun many blocks, get underneath them, and make plays against ball carriers and quarterbacks. Also has the ability to drop into coverage. Had a 90-yard interception return for a touchdown in 2016. His speed has been a real key for Atlanta's renaissance on defense. To throw on second down is Newton. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Throwing on third down, Newton. And he finds a man. It's McCaffrey. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit right around the 31. And give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you're wondering, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. Now Stewart on first down. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down following the run. Out of the gun, Newton. And Olsen over the middle. And he's brought down. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches down for him. Sure consistent. The numbers the last couple of years almost identical and both over 1,000 yard seasons. And here comes play number six on this drive. zone now Newton and his throw here's incomplete he was looking for the connection with Devin Funches and now it's second down I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away dangerous pass incomplete carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Kind of running there at your own risk against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw in that play. No gain. To throw on third down. Newton can fight it. He lost the football. It's out. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball.
So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the Panthers take claim to a 3-0 lead. Maybe an anxious moment or two when the ball was on its way, but he does find a way to curl it in. Oh, yeah. That one definitely hugged the left upright, but he got it to go. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. He's twisting away. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. So out come the Falcons now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Ryan, getting it out left side to Sanu. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there, it'll be second and nine. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter, he's gonna get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up to about the 40. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Freeman again. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Eight yards on the pick up there and it moves the sticks. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best.
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So it'll be first down here after the run. They go play action here on first down. Connects with Sanu right side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman, and he'll get a couple here down to the 22. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third down, Ryan. Coleman has it here right side. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. I think of Tevin Coleman as a really good combo back. He can run it, but in terms of being a third down back, I think he ranks with the best in the league. So good at leaking out of the backfield. Ryan finding him there for the Falcons first. Clock running under a minute to go now here in a fast-moving first quarter. This is Freeman on first and ten. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. drive the defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field
And before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. It's a three-point game here early. We're back to Atlanta in just a moment. This is the NFL, and you're watching EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. of a yard and it'll be second down well that's the big drawback to this play even if somehow the quarterback pitches it he's not immune to the big hit in this case he kept it and absorbed it anyway up third. Luke Keekley combines speed, intelligence, toughness, puts it all together. It makes plays like one we just saw there. He may not be a big time blitzer, but boy, he knows how to pursue straight ahead and make plays in the run game. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now it's Ryan. And this is caught for a touchdown. Now hold everything here. Flag in the backfield. This one might be coming back. Would have put him in the lead, but hold that thought. Yeah, the celebration had to stop, didn't it? Because now you're on a real uptick. You're in the lead. Instead, you're still behind. Have to find a way to regroup. So first and second down went the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. From the shotgun, Ryan. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. resulted in three, but it did. That is somewhat amazing, isn't it? When you hold the ball that long, run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? it has to. started all even as the kicks away. 
Ozzie Whitaker now on the return. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now the Panthers' offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Play action with Stewart. Now Newton. And the tight end Olsen right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes. So difficult to cover. down to the 42. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On second down, here's Newton. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. <laughs> on third down, Newton. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. A gain of eight and a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. And on this challenge, the refs have to take a peek and see whether or not the receiver is able to dot the eye with both feet. While making sure that he possesses the football all the way through the catch. Field. 
Now a first down throw for Newton. And he finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Second down, they run with Stewart. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. left. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And for how much Cam handles the football, he really doesn't fumble a whole lot, but coughed it up there. And I know that a lot of people seeing that play, they immediately go back to the Super Bowl against Denver and Von Miller knocking it free from Cam. But I think you're exactly right. One of the underrated aspects of his game He's fundamentally sound when he carries the football. Whether he's in the pocket or actually running it, he usually does a great job of taking care of it. He'll have to shake that one off. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Following the fumble recovery, it's Ryan. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. First down. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And that is incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And it's third down. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. third down Devontae Freeman and he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36 five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive 
Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And this one brought in by Sanu. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards through the air and a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And Freeman lost the football. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back, but it will be a loss on the play. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. Territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and 10. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. To throw on third down, Ryan. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. K1 short. In there to drop him for a six yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. But pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona, who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them young corners that gave up a lot of big plays. Here's Matt Bosher now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And the Panthers coming out now. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he's got some space here. And he's brought down after a good game. That good for 22 and a first down. All right, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down his speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you all know what I'm on the plus <laughs> side of. All I know is that run right there let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely. Still got a lot of life left in those legs. Oh, 
A play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. He's got his man on the crossing route. 15 yards through the air on a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. turns and hands to Stewart. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Play action. It's Newton. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. A shotgun snap for Newton. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdowns. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. down Newton he hits Stewart in the flat and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line a gain of four on the play and it'll be a second down so many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field Again, Newton. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Brooks Reed able to get in there and drop him for a two-yard loss. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call.
The Panthers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Newton. And he gets it to punch his complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. So the chain gang now done for the drive. Ball on the 10, first and goal. Out of the gun, Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Now whistles, flagged down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Throw on second down is Newton. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and goal. From the gun, Newton. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. The Falcons going to use another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. And Gano's kick is right through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Yeah. 
After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Get up! They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That good for 19 and a first down. First down, Ryan. Sanu with a grab over the middle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, the defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And some options here for the offense on second and two. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. The Falcons on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This time they face a third and two. From the gun, it's Ryan. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Final play of the half, it's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped. We welcome you to our EA Sports halftime report. The Falcons are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Panthers have come in and look good as the road team and will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. First and 10. Here we'll get a fumble on the return. Now after 
the fumble. Shorts. He's going to push his way to the QB here. This one ends up as a loss of six. Now first and ten. Reed's going to take down the QB here. This ends up as a loss of seven. Brandon and Charles are standing by for our second half in Atlanta. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. you think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got it. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. K-1 short in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, Freeman. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. And he's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan finding Gabriel complete. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there on 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up the first down. And now a first down following that long gain. They go play action here on first down. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Off the play fake. Here's Ryan. Ryan hit. The football and fortunately he's able to reel it back in but it's going to go down as a big loss here on the play 
Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the shotgun, Ryan drops it off for Coleman. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Looking to get the ground game going with Stewart. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. This is Stewart again. Fighting through, and he's got space. He's at the 50, the 30, past the 20. Touchdown, Carolina. Jonathan Stewart, 77 yards. And the Panthers add on to their lead. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. And his kick is right through. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Gano out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Tight. 
Now Ryan on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. And down he'll go at the 25. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Second down now after the pass completion. Ryan. Blitz coming and down he goes. Mario Addison in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Operating from the gun, Ryan, and the pressure gets to him again. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. <laughs> wow, evasive. Make a miss. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Getting set to go again here. Cam Newton marches back onto the field. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset... The fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. Now a play fake here on first down. On the catch, this is Russell Shepard. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37 third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now on second down here's Newton <laughs> Caught left side by Funches. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, 
he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. to throw again. Newton and Olsen over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive. And it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And Gano's kick is right through. And the lead stretches. 16 to 3 now. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. Rush coming and he's taken down. Ben Jacobs in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet.
So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Coleman now. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. <laughs> Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. This is taken at about the 14. Now Jonathan Stewart getting set to go as he trots back out there. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Now a first down throw for Newton. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, speaking of incomplete passes, we had a very controversial incomplete pass in Week 15 in that Steelers-Patriots game, did we not? In the city of Pittsburgh, it wasn't incomplete. Right, <laughs> yeah. For them, it's, it's tough. They won. If they you're won, a Steelers right? fan, that was not an incomplete pass. That was a touchdown. But by letter of the law, having to... Catch a football as a, as a receiver is going to the ground. He has to survive the ground, holding on to the football firmly. But letter of the law, it wasn't a catch. Right. The problem is, you put 100 people in a room, that looks like a catch. Right. So then the question going forward is, does that rule need to be changed? Well, the competition committee tried to define it clearly two years ago. I think they'll be back here this spring, once again, trying to clearly define what is a catch. Because right now, a lot of people are confused. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. A shotgun snap for Newton. A dump off here to Stewart. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Newton. And he finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. So second down, three yards to go now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize the strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. 
they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Panthers out in front and in control of the football as well as we begin quarter number four. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. Give him six yards and they do convert on third. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all on your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. They'll try the air now with Newton. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Brooks Reed in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. From the gun, here's Newton. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. So now from a defensive perspective, they might still have a pulse. Yeah, that probably would have sealed their fate, but now they're still within two scores. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. Well, they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a... Base is clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. His throw incomplete. 
fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Throwing again. Ryan. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. They'll run it now out of the gun. Give them eight yards on the carry, and that's going to bring up fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Carolina getting set to take the field. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there, we've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? The play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. Pressure brought in. Falcons get there for the sack. Brooks Reed getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The Panthers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. Here it's third and three. Out of the gun, Newton. And he gets it to Funches complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Down, it's Newton. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 
10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. To throw on second down is Newton. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Here's Newton now on second down. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment. But here, he's one that has to absorb the contact. And as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First and ten, it's Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. down and finding the tight end Hooper five yards on the catch there brings up second down fourth quarter every drive so critical and you figure may only get one more shot after this so a touchdown's imperative on this drive it is but you also have to think to yourself in play calling don't hold anything back don't save it for the second touchdown you got the first one for the second one to even matter On 
Second down, Ryan. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Ryan will throw again. Finding Gabriel complete. And it's a fumble. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drive. And obviously now... No chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. All right, Greg Olson getting ready to trot out there for another drive. And this is how the game has trended for him numbers-wise. He's really picked it up. And i, I got to be honest, I don't know schematically. This is where I need you. What does the defense need to do to get back to that start that they had on him? You've got to harass him early in his route. Right off the line of scrimmage, someone needs to be there. So it's not what we call a free release where he just gets into the route so easily. Because once he builds up momentum and speed, forget it, you're done. Knock him off of that, chip away at his timing, and then make sure you have a second person there in the vicinity as well. Too big and too strong usually for one person to handle. Here's Newton. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Shepard. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Grady Jarrett in there with pressure yet again, and that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. From the 50, Newton. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. Forty six on his first kick this one in that neighborhood as well and out of bounds sailed over looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect directional kicking at its finest right down at the one yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Oh, 
A handoff, Devontae Freeman. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Eight yards to go here on second down. From the gun, it's Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. Able to break the tackle, but then quickly brought down just outside of the five. Give him three on the play, and they're going to have a third down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. Give him six on the play there. And it'll be first down Atlanta. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So here we go, first and 10 now. To throw again is Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. to throw again. Ryan. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. Third and two, now Ryan. That's complete, Hooper. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. A Falcon first down, Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. On first down, Ryan. Going underneath, it's Coleman. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Ball start offense. 
And that'll set him back five. The penalty on first down backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. Again, Ryan swings it out to the flat for Freeman. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Throwing again, Ryan. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Third and long. It's Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. down with Ryan he's going to flip one out here to his running back wasn't a ton of space but a great move he's able to work it to the 20 yard line well Charles it's great to win at home in the NFL when you win on the road it's a little extra special isn't it it is because let's face it in most cases you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long.